today is Ryan's day here on Narc Abuse TV. Here we're gonna have some fun. We're gonna have some guy talk, kinda, not exactly. Let's get Ryan in here in a little bit here. Give uh, your Ryan opinion on narcissistic parents, a relationship with a narcissistic parent. Give some tips. You know, it, it comes down to the way that they're they're communicating with you. Uh, and a lot of times they learn these behaviors, which I'll explain in a second, from their grand, from their parents. So our, you know, our grandparents. Okay. And, uh, you know, it just becomes so normalized uh, that it's, you know, they're very demanding. Uh, you know, they, they basically don't really care what your feelings are. Um, and and they're, they're running the show. You know, they're telling you do this, do that. And, you know, you just, you don't really feel much love as a child. And uh, it's, it's really damaging because, you know, I mean, even school is tough, you know, going to the school. So like you're getting, you know, basically picked on at school, you're getting picked on at home. Uh, and, and it can feel like very lonely. And, and it's hard to know strategy as a little kid on, on, on how to deal with it. Uh, th this is actually how we, we get, you know, people that start people pleasing, we get people that are uh, you know, low self-esteem. Mm -hmm. These are manifestations of, of narcissistic relationships. Um, and, uh, you know, the, the way there's, there's many ways to fix it, but the, the biggest thing is the energy behind it. You know, we, we start to do these patterns of, like I said, people pleasing, mm -hmm. uh, you know, having negative thoughts, you know, oh, I'm not good enough uh, to have a, a healthy relationship. Because... we sorry, uh, say that one more time. Will they start to sabotage their own life because of the way they were raised? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. It, it's kind of funny because when, when you have, you know, so when you have that narcissistic person, first off, they're extremely damaged. You know, they've been some, through some real shit, some real trauma, intense situations, and they're really, they're projecting that energy onto you and it right. literally latches onto your body. So you actually start to embody that energy in, in, in certain relationships. Yeah, I, so you can be... And, uh, and, and I noticed too, in some relationships, I actually became the narcissist. You know, I, I was like, wow. do this and do that. And, and I was, you know, treating some people like, like crap. So, uh, so believe wait, it or not. I just so, got to, dude, I got to ask you this. Then. So check this out. So you became like the parent was to you in the relationship with the person? I did with some women. I, I, I honestly did. I really wow. did. Now, I know, again, we're going to talk about a number of different things. So I'm just touching on stuff. Everybody, if you want more of this conversation and what, more out of it and what can be done, please talk to Ryan. Uh, I'm not the expert here. I'm just, you know, I'm just the greatest showman. I bring, it's like the circus. I bring everybody in. Guys, you, guys Paxton's lying right now. Got, he's already he, had so many he, interviews. He, he knows it's better than me. No, 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 no. I learn, I learn something each time. This is the free TV, public service channel uh, with coaches and, and other people. Okay, next question. Here we go. We talked about narcissistic parent. Much more could be said. We don't have the time. Yep. So what we're going to do is I'm going to pivot to this. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I, I think, I think if they're affecting you a lot still where, when you call them or you talk to them and, and it still gives you, it triggers you, right? That, that's, I think that's when you know it's still a problem. Uh, you know, at that point you have the choice to how, what is the frequency of the communication that you have with them Got it. Got it. And, and really setting those boundaries. I mean, I mean, that's part of the work and the healing when you're, when you're dealing with narcissistic people, it's, it's how you treat them with the boundaries but also, if you still find yourself going back into that narcissistic sibling, that narcissistic parent, or, or boyfriend, girlfriend, there's still a part of you that actually wants that relationship, that still wants to be whoa, in that whoa, troubled wait, energy. That's a, wait, that's a good oh, thing. Oh, oh, no, that that's a, a big good, one. No, yeah, hey, uh, hey for, my, for my loyal followers, that's a big one. So what you're saying is there's a part still within us that is possible that they may want, you want peace. You want to be able to get along you want that relationship to have a common ground and work together, but they're being abusive. They're triggering um, things that don't make you feel comfortable. They make you twitch. They make you twitch yep. the wrong way. Yep. Their in, the energy that they're giving doesn't, doesn't work well with yours. So let's say we're talking about having what? Supervised contact, minimal contact, gray rock, no contact. Leave leave yeah, them on, leave think, them on leave them on unread. No, what do we talk about? <laughs> just block them totally. <laughs> See, I was, with go, two by four. I was working. I was working up to that, but go ahead. Uh, so we have yeah, to be careful. I, I think it just 
Yeah, I mean, the the thing is, I would say sometimes maybe you just want to no contact for a while, heal yourself a bit, and then come back because is is it, the the degree to which you're unhealed is the degree to which you will continue to be controlled by this person. Okay, because so good point. I'm sorry. To to the degree that a person, me, I'll pick me. So to the degree yeah. that I am unhealed is to the degree that I'm going to continue to have contact with this person. Nope. Exactly. Where were where you where you subconsciously actually still want, even though like consciously you're like, I don't like the way I feel. Right. There's a part of you that still wants to be triggered, that still wants to be traumatized by that person. Got it. Got it. So so doing the work on ourself means that we need to make sure that we're not <laughs> we're not walking into landmines that we set up for ourselves to be traumatized exactly. by that person. So we need to literally go do the work on ourselves to make sure that we're feeling the right energy for ourselves and we're thinking the right way instead of blaming it on the other person that they're triggering us. Maybe we need to be careful not to put ourselves in situations that we can be provoked uh, is kind of what I'm understanding that you're saying. Hey, thank, thanks. Exactly. A lot. Go ahead. Exactly. Right. Cause even if you do, even if you do no con, let's say you do no contact with this sister or with this sibling or with this parent, if, if you still don't do that work, uh, which we can talk about what that is later, Right. Um, then, then you'll still attract another relationship that that's similar to that. I mean, I had that with myself where, you know, I did no contact with the parents. I did no contact with uh, a few other friends that, that I thought were toxic relationships. Mm -hmm. And then I go into, you know, I, I used to be a dating coach and I, I remember getting a, a business partner in that I literally the same dynamics same type happened of, same with this type guy. Of person. I was like, and that's when right. I knew I was like, okay, yeah. I need to step back and heal myself here because this is not this is not going well. You end up having the similar person with the similar behavior, thinking that you were doing okay by having no contact with someone else who you thought was going to be bad for you, but lo and behold, bingo, same scenario, different face, different time exactly. and face, but same. Same, same, same effect. Okay, so next one. Here we go. Uh, question. Go. If you had to explain to someone in the simplest way possible, what is narcissism? Yeah, I think it goes back to how do you feel with this person? Do you feel triggered? Do you feel limited? Do you feel stuck? If you're feeling those things, guarantee you a toxic relationship every time. Right. So always goes back to the way that you feel internally. I mean, the, the best relationships, you're, you're feeling open, expanded. Got you know, you, you feel right. safe to share, safe to be yourself, and you don't have to filter everything you're doing. Right. Is, okay. is it possible, though? I'm just going to throw this in. Is it possible that in that relationship, it's not all the other person? Maybe I haven't done the work yet. And I'm still triggered from something that maybe that is or is not happening because of a previous relationship. Maybe I'm seeing something that really doesn't exist. I'm just throwing it out there. You, I just trying to get your thoughts on it. Yeah, I think it's both. Yeah, because a relationship is a two way street, you know, and and we we, we basically and, and as humans, we ping off of each other. You know, if I'm true, if we're talking right now, I have good energy. You're going to feel that energy oh, yeah, through gotcha. the mirror neurons. Yeah, right. You know, if, if I'm like. Paxton, what are you doing? You should be more professional. You know how? Yeah. Oh, dude, don't even, don't even believe it. Yeah. <laughs> See, now, now you're triggered. Wait, now I'm triggered. Critical difficulties. I'm deliberately low budget. <laughs> just Go yeah. ahead. So, like, yeah. You, no, but I see what you're saying. Go ahead. I like that. And we could, the, we're supposed to ping off each other. That's pretty good. That, I like that. Go ahead. Yeah, we're pinging. We're yeah. pinging back I like and forth. That. I like that. But but here's when you know it's it's mostly them, and and I and I would say it's very rare actually that it's it's only them. Uh, but here's the scenario which it would be: when you give them love, you hug them, you know, give them compliments, you do things that you know they they should like, and they come back with negativity on purpose, deliberately, to bring uh, to bring the relationship down. No bueno, not good. No no bueno. Because if they can't, if they cannot accept loving energy, there's a huge block internally with them where it's just shooting out, it's jujitsuing negative energy towards you. <laughs> Dude, I just thought. There are things that you figured out that at some point in your life you had no idea, but now you do. 
And now you're spreading those ideas, thoughts, and productive opinions with others. But I want to do this. I want to take things from your page, and I'm going to toss them at you. No curveballs, nothing like that. It's all stuff that you wrote. And I want you to just let it, let it out. Just, just go ahead and let it out. That's, that's what I want to do, which is essentially the way I started this whole page. I wanted people to just come on here and let it out. That's what I wanted. Well, I, I got I to gotta clear this with my assistant first. Hold on, Paxton. Oh. Hey, Jennifer. <laughs> you did, where's the assistant? I want to talk to the assistant. Let me talk to the assistant. Where's the assistant? Oh, where's the assistant? I'll talk to the assistant. Hey, wait. Hey, I want you to talk. Wait, I want you to talk to my assistant. Here we go. No, here's my assistant. You ready? Now, what do we got to talk about, boy? <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 got, I got so many different sides of me. So many different sides. You do. Okay. It's incredible. So, but there was something you were talking about before we ended the, the last segment. And I'm thinking, oh, okay, I'll just talk about it the next time him and I get together. And we're like, no, you got to touch on it because you, you were making a point. And I yep. felt like you could go on about it. But we had to take a commercial break because of time. And you were talking about guys not having, you said, self-love, self-love or something yep. like that. Okay, yeah. take a little bit, and then I'm going to go into some stuff I got prepared for you. But take a little bit. What are you talking about so, so guys can kind of wrap their brains around that, but especially the ladies that may hear this, what that means? Okay, let's do it. So, well, self-love, you know, when, when people talk about self-love, it, it's really, I, I see it as a similar thing as confidence. I mean, if you love yourself, you're going to be confident, right? So, um, you know, it goes back to training once again, you know, the way that we're raised by our parents, you know, those are our biggest teachers, our biggest coaches, especially from ages zero to 18. And, and just the, the way that we communicate to men, I, I think is just totally wrong. Uh, there's some good things, but, but the main thing is that men need to feel more comfortable to share their emotions, to share their fears or desires, uh, what's really happening for them and, and have people that they can mastermind with, uh, especially other men. Uh, we're, we're starting to see more of that now. You know, there's more men's groups and stuff coming out, but it, but it's a, a little bit too late in my opinion. It sh that should be happening from a small age because that, that's where our brain is most like Play-Doh, most easy moldable. That doesn't mean you can't hear yourself now because you can, but it's all about making men feel safe to, to talk about their emotions, to talk about their goals, their dreams, their desires, and, and to feel safe, most importantly. Because what, what happens is now, uh, well, it's probably been going on for the last 100 years or so, but um, is that when you have guys with their guy friends, first off, there, there's no serious conversations, let's be honest. I mean, <laughs> it's, it's all, wait, it's wait, all wait, locker wait, room. No, wait, time out. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Yeah. <laughs> he's speaking truth. Listen, ladies, he's speaking truth. What serious conversations do most guys really, really have, right? It's not there. Well, I guess because it's a dead silence. <laughs> no, no, because no, seriously. I mean, to have a serious conversation is like, yeah, dude, okay, all right, all right. So what was the game like? And that's like the end of the serious conversations that they really dude. have about, about being vulnerable. But go ahead. Go ahead. You were saying. It's so true, man. I mean, we, 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 we're so easily able to talk about sports, about women, and that's pretty much the main two things. So, so, but surface stuff. We don't, hey, we don't even go deep a lot on, on, on sports sometimes because <laughs> I don't want to argue with you about, you know, so it's, they are, men can sometimes easily think it's going to enter into an argument. And no, in actuality, you need to have a discussion. Uh, go ahead. I, I did it again. I got to stop. Go did ahead. it again. It's all right. I'm, I'm getting on my soapbox about men. Go ahead. It, it's true, man. So it's, it's, it's so surface level. I mean, the weather, I mean, you know, I remember growing up with my, with my father and we're only talking about weather, about sports, about random TV shows. I don't give two, you know, yeah. rats Snickers, something about Snickers, 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 Snickers. <laughs> man, I got to watch my cussing, but, uh, <laughs> but, uh, we don't have those conversations where, you know, uh, it, it's vulnerable, you know, where, where, because Absolutely. it's seen as weak, it's seen as weak, yeah. you know, yeah. it's seen as, you know, you're, you're the P word, P ending with a Y, you know, you're, uh, you're, you're, you're not a man, you know, that's what women do. I mean, that's a load of crap that it really is. 
And and actually, strength is from being open and honest because you're, you're you're acknowledging where you currently are emotionally, and and trying to work from that space. If you're not talking about it, you're once again we go back to repression, avoiding, you right. know, pretending it's not there, and yeah, and that yeah. will kill your happiness, kill your self love, your self esteem. It, it's actually through these conversations, these direct open conversations, that you're able to grow yourself as a man. And, and, and really be in tune with, uh, you know, what's really coming up for you and, and what do you really care about? What are your, you know, natural boundaries? I, I really believe we all have natural boundaries and, and ways of, of behavior that we actually want to be in alignment with. And when we right. go out of that alignment, then, then we become less happy, less self-love, right. you know, right. more depressed, things like yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you see the screen, right? You get <laughs> You getting some love on the screen. I'm waiting for the amen, but you already got to preach, brother. You already got to preach, brother. brother. You got to preach, brother. And to uh, talk about some things that I want to talk about right now with you. It's off of your page. Do you you mind if I go a little bit more into depth on what that last person asked for there on the the men and women perspective? Oh, yeah. With Angela. Go ahead. You were going to say. Yeah. So here's the thing uh, for for women out there. I don't understand your guy. Understand that he's most likely been extremely traumatized. You know, he he probably hasn't opened up in a long time or you ever know, you have to <laughs> or, or, ever. or ever or ever and you have to and you have to take your time like I, you don't understand like for i, I get it for what for most women uh it's it's easy for you guys to express your emotions but for men it's not because we see it as as weakness so you have to you just allow him to just slowly open up the thing and, and, and patience and of course they have to be willing to open up too but it can't be forced you know you want to hold it goes both ways. I actually want to talk about healthy masculinity here in a second too, but it's about holding that space for your guy where he feels safe and loved and like you're not going to leave him or judge him or criticize him or make him feel wrong for what he's doing, but just hold a space where he can like, where it can like take or leave it as far as opening up and then he will open up. Yeah. But um, uh, I'm going to pull away from uh, this part of the discussion because um, we're going to, we'd be here. We'd be here two more segments because uh, this, is, uh, this is something I want to do with you, is talk about this kind of stuff uh, separate than what we did in the first segment. Uh, we yeah. can spend a whole two segments talking about this and take questions and answers on, on what a guy does and says when he opens up. Um, thank you so much for being here. It means a lot. But now the show is going to turn. <laughs> All right. Low budget show, high caliber guests. Just remember that, everybody. <laughs> Guys, don't let him fool you. How do you I, think you got that microphone? I got a hey, somebody got it for me. <laughs> somebody, somebody went like, "Hey, you know what? Let's 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 pick up the Picante on this guy. And, you know, let's get something going." Okay, here we go. Um, I'm gonna read something to you, and now remember, I'm gonna read stuff to you. Just just talk about yep. it, and just like you just did on this subject. Just just go ahead and let us have it. Um, let it out. What would your life look like if you no longer had inner voices attacking you? So what would your life look like if you no longer had inner voices attacking you? You had a post, and that's what the post said. You did that on January 29th. Mm -hmm. Why did you make that post? What are you talking about, inner voices? Yeah, so this is a manifestation of of inner traumas that we experience, intense situations that we wish didn't happen uh, when we're younger. They, They can manifest as negative thoughts. And so many people don't really talk about that because it, it's seen as like you're, you're a crazy person if you have negative thoughts going on. And no one wants to admit, you know, that, that you hate yourself or that. And, you know, I, I think it needs to be acknowledged and, and people need to feel safe that it's okay to have negative thoughts. It's okay to have traumas. It's okay to feel like, sh- like uh, Snickers. I call myself there. <laughs> you, you get, you're getting better, man. You're it's, getting better. It's, uh, it's okay. And, and there's, there's ways to, to work through those things. And, uh, you know, I, I think especially as guys, we, we're definitely scared to, to say that we have negative thoughts and are not feeling yep. good internally because we so often yep. use external things to make us feel better. Oh, let me go watch Netflix. Yep. Oh, oh let, me, let me look at Instagram. Let yep. me watch a movie. Let me go call up this person. Let me, we always yep. use these external things that look like productive, but really you're just distracting yourself from yourself. Right. Of course, you don't want to have a narcissist that's pulling your leg. This is we're talking about a normal man, yeah. a normal guy. Uh, but uh, when it comes to the inner critic, men struggle with that. 
they struggle with that severely in many ways. You're getting some more on the screen there. So when yes, it comes to can. when it comes to an inner critic, how how can you? What advice do you give? How can a person navigate with that? Exact. Great question. So, well, first off, you have to figure out where is this coming from. And if you look at the way most of societal structures are set up, like at home and at school, there's always like the, the leader, right? But a lot of times, there's not actually a lot of healthy leaders out there, in my opinion, especially in school systems and family systems. So we're, we're so used, especially as men, and I'm not saying women don't have it too, because they can, but with men, we get so criticized for every little detail mistake that you screw up. But it, it's going to, of course, we're going to make mistakes and, and screw up. I mean, we're, we're human. And there's right. so much pressure. I mean, I, uh, for myself growing up, you know, I was, uh, I was a tennis player and, uh, you know, played D1 college tennis, was trying to play pro. But a lot of my motivation was driven from this, this need to get approval and validation from my father because he, he never compliment, complimented me. He never, you know, said, I love you, hug me. It was, not, it was always like, it's never good enough. It's never good enough. Like I would win matches and it's like, it's not good enough. It's just like, but that, that, but I'm not the only one experiencing that. A lot of guys experience that That's true. where they, right. they feel this need to get results to perform. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying not to go for that, but it, once again, what is the energy of the motivation in order to get results to performance? You know, doing it because you really love it or because you wanting something from someone else right. or trying to prove something, which just creates negative energy long-term. Okay. And then that's why you see these guys' mental health issues. So it's a, a momentum of energy that's built up over time. So you have to go find that place where it first started, start working through it, you know, doing breath work, visualization. Uh, there's specific ways to do that. I mean, that sounds very general, but there's specific ways to tune into those energies and release them. And uh, which you can go back and watch that later. Or if you want to ask me, I can do that later. Or we can yeah, do another segment too, if you yeah. want.